For investors, uh, of course, high gasoline prices create new opportunities in the energy sector, but for consumers, they are up in arms. Moments ago, the House passed that bill that they'd been considering. The vote was 284 to 141 that would impose criminal penalties, criminal penalties for price gouging of as high as $250 million for a corporation, $2 million in two years in prison for an individual. Is this the way to protect the economy, or is it a case of government gone wild? Joining us, Mario Lewis, a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, and Tyson Slocum is back with us, the director of energy program at Public Citizen. We got that right this time, Tyson. He uh, testified before the House subcommittee that was holding the price gouging hearings yesterday, and I know you have to be pleased that they passed this, but I happen to know, Tyson, you're upset that they added a provision that uh, this only happens if the president declares an emergency situation. That's right. I mean, this price gouging legislation is only going to come into effect in very limited circumstances, only when the president declares an emergency, like something after a Hurricane Katrina or when the tornadoes hit Kansas. So it's only going to affect a small region. I think this is the least that Congress can do is to... Uh, make it illegal for uh, already profitable companies to exploit consumers during a time of national, national crisis or an emergency. What do you think, Marlo? Well, this is a form of price control, and price control has a long and sordid history going all the way back to ancient Roman times, if not before. In every case, when government legislates a price ceiling, call it what you will, call it anti-price anti gouging, the effect is to increase consumer demand at the same time that you discourage producer supply, making any disruption in supply, any shortage, even worse. So this is not going to help consumers at all, and in the long run, it will discourage investment in oil production, reducing supply, which also will, ri will drive up gasoline prices. What about that, Tyson? You don't have to go back to ancient Rome. You can go back to the 70s when it was tried, and we, we know what happened then. Well, first of all, the oil industry isn't even uh, reinvesting enough of their record earnings. I mean, take ExxonMobil, for example. Last year, they spent $824 million reinvesting back in their domestic refining sector. Sounds like a big number, but when you compare it to the $37 billion that Exxon spent last year buying back their stock and paying out against the shareholders, this shows that the industry has no plans to build any new refineries. They aren't reinvesting adequately. That's why we have all these refinery outages. At a time when government has no price controls, no uh, price gouging legislation, the industry isn't stepping up. They're not uh, reinvesting in their aging infrastructure. They're not building new refineries. Even we need to protect consumers from this price gouging. And, and let's face it, Marlo, the, the so-called crack spread that uh, measures the, the difference between the price of oil and gasoline right now is at around $36. It's very high at this point, relative, you know, historically speaking. So is Big Oil doing enough to try and you know, help the consumer at this point? Yeah, well, two quick points here. First, if you look at the, the ExxonMobil or you look at the U.S. oil companies as a whole, they plow back into investment, which includes refinery expansions, but also includes oil exploration and, and extraction just about every dime they make every year in profits. And secondly, the reason why there's that spread you talked about is that imports of refined gasoline and gasoline blend components from Europe are down, and that's due to strikes in Europe and also just rising demand for gasoline all around the world. So to, to try to, to find some conspiracy here is a, is a, is a, is a flight of the, of the imagination. And let's see if the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, can find anything like that. In 30 previous investigations, they, they've come up empty-handed. And Tyson, let's face it, we live in a capitalist society. Profits are the goal. And good for the oil companies if they are able to profit from what's going on right now. There have been plenty of years, they will tell you, when they weren't profiting, when oil was much, much lower than it is right now. Profits are great when it's coming from a, from a competitive market. We don't have an adequately competitive market. We've allowed all of these huge mergers to occur. I mean, Exxon and Mobil used to be global competitors. Now they're on the same team. The same goes with Chevron, Texaco, Conoco, Phillips. All of, that, uh, all of those mergers has reduced competition. Consumers don't have access to an adequately competitive market. That's why you're seeing the big profits. I just want a, a fair and reasonable return. I want competition. We don't have that today. Well, the price gouging measure has passed the House now. There's a similar version in the Senate. We'll see how that goes and see what happens after that. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us today. Appreciate thank it very you. much. Thank you, Bill. Street signs coming up in a few